Now I'm going to introduce a D-latch which has a clock in it and instead of two separate signals R and S I just have one combined signal which is D which refers to the value of a certain data signal. So inside you'll see that there are two AND gates and the value of D feeds in its raw form to one of the AND gates and in its inverted form to the other AND gate. And there is a clock which feeds as the other input for both of these AND gates. And what comes up next is essentially the RS latch, right? So these two NOR gates compose a traditional RS latch. So now let's just kind of walk through what's, what's happening. Let's say that the clock just went high and is staying in its high state. That means that both the AND gates have one of their inputs as being high, right? So they're, they're essentially passing whatever is their other input. In one case, it is D that is coming through over here. And in the other case, what's coming through is D bar. Okay, so if D is 1, then D bar is 0. That means at this moment, the SR latch is in a set state. That means the value of Q becomes 1. When the clock goes low, this input to the AND gate and this input to this other AND gate are both zeros. That means the AND gate is not in a conducting state. That means its outputs are always going to be zero. So this is going to be a zero and this is going to be a zero. So both inputs to the RS latch are going to be zeros. That means the RS latch is going to be in a remember state. That means the value of Q is not going to change during this half cycle. When the clock is low, the output is in the remember state and is not going to change. Okay, and then later when the clock goes high again, now I'm in a state where I'm willing to look at my input D and my output reflects whatever my input is, right? So at this point, Q is essentially D. And in this state over here, Q is in the remember state where it just remembers what its last value was. Okay, so now we've designed a latch that has a clock where during the high phase of the clock, my output simply mirrors my input value D. And in the low state, I just remember what my last value was. So I'm guaranteed that my output is not going to change during this low phase over here. Now I'm going to build on the D latch and create what is referred to as a D flip-flop. And what's the difference between a latch and a flip-flop, right? Let's first recap that discussion I had in the previous slide, where I said that in a D latch, when the clock is high, the value of the output Q is nothing but the input value D, right? And so as D changes during that high clock state, even the value of Q may change. But once the clock goes low, the value of Q is going to be in a remember state. That means it's just going to be the last value that it saw before the clock transitioned to a low state. With a D flip-flop, right? So this is, this is the remember state here. This is going to be the remember state. And this is the state where Q equals D. With a D flip-flop, when the clock is rising, exactly at that point of time, the value of my output Q is that, is that instantaneous value of D. And then for the entire clock cycle, I'm going to be in a remember state where I remember the value of the input D when the clock was rising. Okay, so let's kind of walk through the circuit. You'll see that it's designed by having two back-to-back -back D latches and I'm providing a clock which is, is fed in its raw form to the first latch and is fed in its inverted form to the second latch. And the input D goes into the first latch. Its output is, let's call it Q prime, which feeds as input, as the D input to the second latch. And then you finally have the output Q over here. Okay, so let's kind of go through an example here. Let's say that my clock just went high and in that high state, the value of Q prime is just going to mirror whatever the value of D is. When that clock goes low, I'm now, you know, Q, Q prime is now going to be in the remember state. That means it's going to remember whatever its output was just before the clock transition to low, right? So essentially the value of D at that moment is captured in Q prime and is going to be retained for the next entire half cycle. Okay, now during that, that second half cycle, this clock is actually high, right? Because the input clock, which is currently in its low state, has been inverted. So right now, the clock input to the second latch is actually high, right? So at this point, the value of Q is going to be whatever its input is, which is now Q prime, right? And we know that Q prime is not going to change during this half cycle. 
Okay, and then sometime later the clock goes high. That means this D latch sees a low clock. So it is going to be in remember state, right? So so the value of Q prime is going so, so the value of sorry Q is going to be whatever it had last seen, which was the value of Q prime as it was set at this moment over here. Right? So starting from here all the way until here, the value of the output Q is going to equal Q prime, which is nothing but the value of D at that moment. Right? So this achieves what the flip-flop was trying to do. It's basically saying that when the clock goes low, I'm going to capture the value of D and then I'm going to retain it for an entire clock cycle. When my clock goes low again later, I'm again going to capture the input value D and I'm going to retain it for an entire cycle. Right? So this is how I've achieved this kind of functionality. The only difference is that the clock signal has kind of been inverted. Okay, so one way to kind of fix that is to say that before I start, I'm just going to make sure that my clock gets inverted. If I do that, this circuit essentially has a property where it says that at the rising clock edge, the value of D gets mirrored in the output Q, and that value is going to stay true until I see the next rising edge. Right. So at this moment, Q becomes equal to the input value D. So I'm capturing the value of the input as of that moment, and then I'm retaining it for an entire cycle.